When we talk about a system of equations, it's two or more equations that contain the same variables. So these two equations would be part of a system. They both have an x and they both have a y variable. These two equations would also be part of a system. They both have an a variable and they both have a b variable. The solution to a system is the point where those two lines are going to cross. The solution is always written as an ordered pair, so we're going to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, and we say that it satisfies the equation, both equations. So when I substitute this x-value back in and this y-value back in, this equation needs to have a value of 5. When I substitute that same x value into my second equation, that same y value into the second equation, this has to have a value of 10. Solve a system both graphically and algebraically. Today we're going to take a look at how can we do this graphically. These are both linear equations. I know that because they're degree 1. And in order to graph a linear equation, we can get it into slope-intercept form and then graph it from there. So the first thing we're going to do is rearrange this to isolate the y, and then we can plot our points and generate our graphs. When I put this first equation into slope-intercept form, I'm going to start with my y-intercept of 5, so I'm going to plot that point, and my slope is negative 2 over 1, so I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, etc. My second equation, because this y term is negative, I'm just going to move this over, and then I'm going to move my 10 over, and we have y equals mx plus b. This is my y-intercept on the second equation, so I'm going to plot that point at negative 5. We're going to go up 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and we can see that those two graphs cross at this point. The coordinates of that point are 4 and negative 3. So that is the solution to my system, and if it's just two equations like this, we always write it as an ordered pair. And now we're going to check if this solution satisfies both equations. So I'm going to take my first equation, my x coordinate on that point is 4, so I'm going to substitute a 4 in here. My y coordinate on that point is negative 3, so I'm going to put a negative 3 in here. So I'm just substituting those values in, and then we're going through and we're figuring out what is the value of the left side. If it equals the value on the right side, this solution satisfies my first equation, but you have to check both. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our x coordinate, substitute it in for the value of x, take our y coordinate, substitute in for the value of y, and then again, we're going to check. Does the left side of the equation equal the right side? If both sides are equal, then this point also satisfies this second equation and therefore then satisfies the system. In my second example, I know these two equations are part of a system because they have the same variables. They're both linear equations, so I'm going to get you to graph them and find that solution to the system. And again, we're going to first rearrange the equation into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to isolate that y, and then I'm going to begin with my y-intercept at negative 4. And our slope, we're going to go down 2, 3 to the right. So down 2, 3 to the right, or up 2, 3 to the left, and so on. My second equation, I'm also going to isolate y. And my y-intercept is positive 2, my slope is 4 thirds. So I begin at positive 2, I go up 4 over 3, or I go down 4, 3 to the left. This is the point at which they intersect, so this becomes the solution to my system at negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 is my x-coordinate, so I'm going to check by substituting it back in for x in both of these equations. Negative 2 is my y-coordinate, so I'm going to substitute that in for y in both of these equations. If the left side equals the right side on both, then we know we've satisfied the system. We have the correct solution. Now that we understand the process of how to do it by hand, we're going to move into graphing it using technology. So in order to do this, I'm going to begin in y equals, and I'm going to enter those equations. Now anytime you have a fraction, we have to put that in brackets, and then my variable key is this one right here beside the alphabet key. So we're going to go bracket, 4 divided by 3, close the bracket, and then press the variable key and then plus 2, enter, and then that's going to take you down to the second one. Now, this is a negative sign, this is a minus sign. So the negative sign, make sure you press that for the negative 2 thirds, and then make sure you have a minus 4, or it probably will say error. We can check the window, so this is the default settings. We may have to adjust it as we go, but we're going to look for, can we see where those two lines cross? So we're going to go into graph now, and if you can't, you're going to have to adjust the window. In this case, we can't. Okay, so now to get that point, we're going to press second function, 
trace. And that's going to get us to that calculate menu. And then you can see intersect is number five. So we're going to choose number five. And then your calculator prompts you. It says, are we on the first curve? Because after grade 10, most of the systems you do will involve curves. So we're going to move the cursor close. Now do not go up and down because that takes you off the graph. We're only going to go to the left or to the right. And on the bottom here, you can see right now our cursor is at zero two. So we can see it there. Sometimes you can't see it. And then this will kind of help you to know where it is. All right. So we're going to scoot over here. And you just have to get close. Now I want you to watch this. The calculator says, are you on the first curve? And I'm going to press enter to say yes. And then watch my screen here. This is going to jump to the second one. See, it jumps. So now it says, are we on the second curve? And we're going to press enter again to say yes. And then it says, do you want me to guess what that point of intersection is? And we're going to press enter one more time to say yes. And then it tells us X is negative three and y is negative two, and then you have to remember to write that as an ordered pair. This is actually something where people often have to solve them in the real world. So let's take a look at how to do that. In the first example, you want to always figure out what are the two things we're comparing, and the units are going to give you a clue. So we know hours is a unit of time, and dollars is a unit of money or earnings in this case. So the independent variable is going to be the time, and then the amount we earn will depend on the time. So we're going to get our graph set up, and then I want you to see if you can write an equation to represent each of those scenarios. It is a system because in both of these equations we're comparing time to earnings, but to differentiate, I've just used subscript to show this is Aaron and this is Carmen's wages or earnings. All right, so I know Aaron, she starts with $40 and then she's earning $10 for every hour. So after two hours, $20. After three hours, $30 plus that original $40. Carmen starts with $50, but then she gets $8 an hour. So after two hours, $16. After three hours, $24 and so on. So even though Carmen begins with more money, and I've used two different colors so we can see this, the slope is not going to rise as steeply as it is here because Aaron is earning more money. So at some point, those two lines are going to cross. Now, instead of doing this one by hand, because you can see your scale is going up by 10 on the y-axis, I'm going to switch to the calculator and get my solution that way. So I've gone ahead and entered y1 and y2. And then keep in mind, this means we have a y-intercept of 40, and this means we have a y-intercept of 50. If I go to graph it, based on what the window is currently set at, we're not going to see where those two graphs cross. We're not even going to see where they start because they're starting up here. Now remember, this right now is a maximum of 10. It's the y-maximum that needs to go up. So Let's choose a number higher than 50. Maybe let's go with 100. And then if we're going from negative 10 to 100 on this y-axis, I'm going to maybe want a scale of 10. I'll link the description box below the video on how to adjust the window, just if you want to refer back to that. And then we're going to take a look at this graph again. And we're, again, looking for where those two lines cross. We're getting closer. Okay, I'm going to move my graph up a little bit and see what that does. So let's go back into the window. And you're going to have to adjust this possibly a few times. Let's try 120 and see if we can see a little bit more clearly. Ideally, we want them kind of in the middle of the screen where they're crossing, but as long as we can see them. Okay, that's actually not bad. So I'm going to go now second function trace, number five. We're going to move the cursor over. You can hold yours down. My computer is not quite as cooperative. Okay, so once you're close, we're going to go enter, enter, enter. And there's my solution. So 5 and 90. Now this 5 is the number of hours. It's my x coordinate. This 90 is the earnings. That's my y coordinate. So those two lines will cross at that coordinate point. That means they're going to earn the same amount of money, $90, at 5 hours of working. And when it asks you to verify a solution, that means make sure that your solution is correct. Substitution is the best way to go about this. So we've looked at this previously. This is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate. Literally substitute them back into the equation and check, does the left side equal the right side? And it has to work for both in order for it to be a solution to the system. Now you could also graph it and get that point of intersection. The problem is if you accidentally rearrange these equations incorrectly, because it has to go into your calculator 
calculator is y equals, you're going to get a solution, but you're not necessarily going to get the right one. So even with that, I would still quickly just put it back in and make sure you can even just mentally check, does the left side equal the right side? The other thing you can do, which is a little bit more time consuming, is you could just make a table of values, choose an x, choose a y, pick any value for x, generate the y coordinate, do it for each equation, and then look to see for what value of x is y going to be the same coordinate.